I'm sure you're aware that all data is broken into manageable chunks before it's sent over the network. We often call these chunks of data packets, which is fine. Technically though, at layer two they're called data frames and at layer three they're called packets. There's a few reasons for breaking our traffic into packets. For one, if there's more than one path to a destination, some packets could take one path and some could take the other. More importantly though, if some packets are dropped, it's easier to detect this and resend a few packets rather than resending everything. Or for some traffic types, it's sometimes okay just to ignore a few missing packets. So the big question we have is, how big should each packet be? The Ethernet standard says that a normal frame should be no larger than 1518 bytes, or 1522 bytes if it includes a VLAN tag. That includes all data and headers. There are normally 18 bytes of headers, or 22 with a VLAN tag, so the payload, that's the data that goes inside the frame, can be up to 1500 bytes. Sometimes we'll enable a feature called jumbo frames. This allows us to grow the maximum frame size to around about 9000 bytes. There are pros and cons to this, which I won't get into right now. Just be aware that jumbo frames exist, which allow us to put more information into a single frame. So as mentioned, inside the frame we have a payload, which is probably an IP packet. This in turn has its own headers and a payload. The largest IP packet, including payload and headers, that an interface can send is called the MTU, or Maximum Transmission Unit. As I said before, this is 1500 bytes by default. On a rare occasion we might want to change this value, for instance if a device along the path somewhere can't handle a packet this big. or we might use a technology that adds more headers to the packet or frame, which leaves less space for the payload. We'll see an example of this when we look at VPNs later in the series. So let's take a look at how we might change the MTU on a switch's interface. This of course is under the interface configuration. Then we simply use the MTU command, followed by the size. So naturally you'll be wondering what happens if a device tries to send a packet that's larger than the MTU. Remember that the MTU could change somewhere along the path too. If this happens, then the packet will need to be fragmented. This is where the device takes the packet that's too large and it's broken into smaller pieces. So each of these pieces is smaller than the MTU limit. The receiving device will then take all these fragments and reassemble them into the original packet. In short though, we don't want fragmentation. This impacts performance by making various devices work harder than they need to. So where you can, configure the MTU correctly. And if you don't need to change it, just leave it as it is. What about enabling jumbo frames on your internet connection? Do you think that's possible? Have a think about it, maybe do some of your own research and see what you can find. Um, consider discussing it in the comments section if you want to.